Over the last couple of weeks, we've talked about a lot of verdicts and what juries have awarded. And for the most part, I've given you the amount of medical bills, the amount of lost wages, where the wreck occurred, and whether the defendant in the case admitted responsibility or not. Uh, what I hope you've noticed is that the verdicts are kind of all over the place. Some people got millions of dollars for hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical bills, and some people got not as much money. Uh, and the reason why is because in a case, the verdict amount doesn't just depend on the hard numbers. In a lot of cases, it's about the quality of the person that was injured and whether and just how likable or unlikable the person that caused the injury is. Now imagine that you're sitting on a jury and you have to decide how much to award someone on, let's say, $100,000 in medical bills. And you get to award damages for pain and suffering. That's just the actual anxiety and pain and daily problems associated with an injury. Now imagine in one case, you've got a defendant who says, I didn't do anything wrong. This, per this person's injury is completely their fault and I don't wanna pay anything. And then consider that you've got another defendant that says, I made a mistake, it's completely my fault, I'm very sorry, I wanna do what's right. Given those two scenarios, most jurors are gonna award less money to the plaintiff when the defendant is admitting responsibility and has expressed remorse compared to where a defendant says that he doesn't wanna accept responsibility. Now, the other thing to take, keep in mind is the plaintiff himself. Now, imagine a case where a, the injured person is trying to get back to work and they're just held back by their injury uh, compared to a plaintiff who probably could go back to work but doesn't uh, because they just don't want to. In that case, you're probably gonna award more money to the person who wants to go back to work and just can't. Uh, and so, some of those details are missed in these videos and I wanted to make sure that I took some time to explain to you some of the other things that go into the case. The other thing that can influence the value of these cases is how the judge rules on certain motions about what can and can't come into evidence. For example, I've had cases before where the defendant has done all kinds of terrible things leading up to that case. They may have caused 10 other automobile accidents, uh, or had a long list of drug violations uh, and drinking and driving and things of that nature. In a lot of cases though, the jury never finds out those facts because they're just too prejudicial. The jury's job is to look at the facts in this case and not consider anything outside of that case. In other cases, the defendant has done things that do come in. For example, if you've got a truck driver uh, and you've sued the trucking company that hired him and the trucking company knew that this guy had caused three really bad wrecks before this one, but didn't do anything to retrain that driver uh, or to make sure that he knew what he was doing on the roadway. That kind of evidence can sometimes come into cases. For example, I talked to you about a case last week involving a tractor trailer driver that rear-ended uh, someone on the road. Now at that trial, and we don't know the details because I didn't try that case, it's entirely possible that the jury was told about how the trucking company didn't take safety seriously and the jury wanted to make certain that that didn't happen again. So I'm gonna try when I can to give you additional details about the people involved in the case, uh, but I want you to keep that in mind as you review these videos. Uh, and if you have any questions about how much a case might be worth or how much you might be entitled to if you yourself have been hurt, give me a call. We offer free consultations. Uh, and if I'm not the right guy for your case, I can certainly get you to someone who is. Uh, thanks and I hope you have a great day.